Hey, hey, Lewis with <laughs> Lewis and Robin without that RV life. Do we do bloopers when we're, we're recording videos live? <laughs> we're a little um, <laughs> fumbling here because we started a stream and all of a sudden um, none of the just not video working. was working. So <laughs> we're going to record this and put it out there. So we apologize um, for those that were expecting us to do a live and maybe ask some questions. You can definitely ask the questions in the comments. And I promise you I'll get back to every single one of them. Um, First thing, we just wanted to welcome everybody. Thank you guys so much for the love and support that you guys have shown us. It's definitely helpful. Um, like I said in the in the stream, I mean, we didn't we didn't even um, expect our our YouTube channel to kind of do what it is doing today, and it's it's kind of cool to see. In the beginning, we didn't have a whole lot of help, so um, we've been getting a ton of questions from a lot of people all over the place, TikTok, uh, Instagram, all over the place, asking about you know what we um, what we did in the beginning and and you know and helping them. So. Welcome. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, we just started a Patreon. So for those that are looking for some kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have done um, a couple of one-on-one of -on -one coaching. I've answered a lot of questions and I've had a lot of people ask if we're willing to do something like that. So we, we uh, started a Patreon so that you guys can get exclusive um, help and feedback and stuff like that and one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you guys want to go check that out, the link is in the bio. Um, the other thing was... Um, Let's see here. I'm also going to be putting together a handful of interviews with um, some some local RV uh, uh, business owners, RV rental business owners, and also some people that have YouTube channels. Also, we're going to do some collaborations and work together. Hopefully, we can get this streaming thing figured out. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but I'd love to do more of that. Um, because... If you know more about YouTube than we do, maybe <laughs> you could let us know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've watched a lot of videos on this stuff, and apparently it still didn't work. So anyway... Um, yeah, but, you know, and then, of course, you know, follow us on all of our, our, our you know, social medias. We've got TikTok, um, we've got Instagram, you know, those are kind of two of the main ones. And, of course, our, our Facebook, you can find us at LR Valdez, and then it's about the RV life uh, Facebook page. Other than that, um, we're going to get kind of right into it. The purpose of this video today was, you know, getting getting the RV rental business off the ground, right? Maybe we can call this part three of the of the RV rental school. So, you know, we've already got kind of our, our RV profile set up. We picked out the RV that we want. Uh, we've got all the right pictures, all the information in our profiles. And what do we want to do next, right? Well, you want to start making some money, right? So the first thing you want to do is obviously get your business off the ground. So I wrote down a handful of things. I'm going to kind of be referring to my notes here um, as we go. Um, do you want to say anything on that? Well, no. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say, except for that it's just one of those things where if you're ready to push play, push play. Get your stuff out there, get things listed, get your sites up, get everything going, and um, ask questions along the way and be willing to fail. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, what were the first things that we were able to do? So number one is, you know, here is a, and I've talked about this before. There is a ton of free social media sites out there. So there's Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. I wanted to show some of the, actually I can. There you go. I'm recording. We can. We can. We're recording. So um, I wanted to show, so here's our, our, our Facebook page here. Let's go there. Uh, there's our Facebook page. You know, um, we were able to kind of, you know, get some, Nice profile picture set up. This is where we post a lot of our videos, information on our live that didn't work today. <laughs> um, and it has our personal website. So if people go to our website, they can make some bookings there. But this is a great way where you can start a free, cheap, um, kind of an ads campaign with Facebook. And you can create an ad for like five bucks. And it's not that expensive to get your name out there. So this was some of the, the things we did in the beginning that were real inexpensive that really kind of got our name out there. Um, with our TikTok, of course, you know, TikTok's one of those things where, you know, obviously it's up to you guys and what you guys want to do. Some people are against it. Some people are for it, but for us, it was a quick way to get a lot of our, our videos on, on our units and certain things and ask our questions and stuff like that. We've got a lot of people that ask us a ton of questions here. And quite honestly, we got some subscribers. So, um, it was a great, it was a great way for us to be able to, um, again, get our name out there. I had a lot of people go, oh, I didn't know you guys are doing this stuff or I've got an RV and you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? And it was just, it was just great to kind of, again, get our information out there. Um, our Instagram page is, we don't have that big of a following yet, but if, uh, if you, um, notice here, I mean, again, some of the same videos, we post a lot of the same reels, um, from Facebook, from, from TikTok on this channel. 
Um, well, that's one of the things that we're learning is that people want to make social media out to be something that's difficult, and it's really not. And um, you can use the same content across all of the platforms. So you're only creating things once you're posting it multiple times and it makes it so simple to get your name out there, to make yourself known. And like, like you can see in, on our Instagram, whether you just have a few followers or when you're looking at TikTok and there's a lot more or on YouTube where we have more, it's not, it's not about the number of followers. It's, are you marketing your stuff to the people that you want to see it? And they're going to share it out and it will continue to grow. And we're starting to see that um, on our YouTube page that that it's going where it needs to go regardless of what we do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So the other thing, so the next part of this, the other thing that we're able to do um, is I started going out there and hitting up, you know, some of the local RV. This is Broadmoor RV um, here in Pasco, Washington. And um, one of the points I was going to talk about was, you know, make friends with um the salesman, you know, there's a lot of salesmen, of course, they want to sell you a rig, but, you know, they're also going to um, have a lot of people that are going to be coming in that are looking to rent units. So what we did is we took, you know, a stack of our business cards, and I've showed these before, and what we were able to do is go out there and just give people business cards and let them know, hey, you know, who we are, um, let them know our business exists, right? And if anybody comes in and is looking to rent out an RV, you know, give them our information. Um, there was a couple of cards, and I don't have one close to me right now, but a couple of cards we made that were kind of sticker-like, and I, I gave them the, those two. But, you know, here we've got Broadmoor RV, <clears throat> which is probably the largest RV dealer here in <clears throat> in our area here. And then another one here that's local that's got a few locations is Click It RV. You guys may have heard of them. But I've got some relationships down there where they, they let me kind of – you know, take a look at some of the newer fifth wheels that they've got. Um, I can do some walkthroughs, you know, certain things like that. Again, to put some content out there to, you know, kind of kind of let people know who we are, right? So there's a lot of free ways. It's just you got to go out there and kind of do the work. That'll help you get your business off the ground. Um, and, and like I said, you know, those relationships are going to go a long way, I think, as you're developing them. Because one, every time there's a good deal and if you start growing your business and you want to add some units... These guys are going to keep you in mind, right? So they're going to want to know um, if you're looking for another unit. And if you are, then you definitely could potentially get a good deal. Um, you got anything to add on that? Okay. So, okay. Well, I was just thinking that a lot of the things that we're mentioning right now are going to be really good tips for people who are trying to scale their business on a larger level. So if you're somebody that has one camper and you're thinking, I just want to rent this sucker out and make a little extra money, let it cover its payment, whatever, a lot of this stuff is probably not what you're looking for. But if you're the person, and if you're watching this video, you probably are, the person who wants to actually create a business out of this, something that can replace household income, something that can um, start generating an income that you can actually live off of. Um, these are these are really helpful tips. And Lewis has been in sales for his entire life, basically, his entire working career has revolved around sales. And so this, if you're a salesperson, this is stuff that you've already learned, but I don't come from that kind of a background. And so it's the, the building relationships and people skills of it all is something that I've had to learn. So part of that is just investing in yourself and taking the time to learn how do we talk to people so that people want to hear us? How do we create relationships with people so that when someone comes into an RV dealership and they say, hey, we've been wanting to rent an RV. Do you guys do that? They remember you and say, oh, we don't. But actually, we know these people who are fairly local and let me give you their card because they'll give you a good deal or they'll hook you up. They'll take care of you, whatever. You want to make sure that people are thinking about you when they're interacting with others. Absolutely. That's a good point. Um, okay, so the other, there's a couple of things here that I wanted to touch on. So RV Share, um, let me see if I can log in real quick. RV Share has um, this thing, well, RV Share has this thing called uh, Insta, or Smart Match, and then Outdoorsy has this thing called uh, uh, Insta Match. So <laughs> <laughs> as you can see here, um, you know, utilize these free leads, right? Don't ignore them. I, I had some people comment and say they've never got one. Well, I think it has a lot to do with your 
your profile and your listing if you've got good pictures, uh, if you got all the information filled out. I think RV Share is going to definitely put it out there. But look at this. I mean, if you look at this, two days I got three, you know, and and another day here I got four. I mean, it's just I'm constantly getting these these leads and they're free. They come from RV Share. Utilize them. Respond to every single one of them. Ask them questions if you have to. Um, I'll just show you real quick. I always use kind of the automated, um, the auto. It's an automated message that RV Share already has already in place, and it says, "Hi, I saw you're interested in renting an RV for you know August 18th through the 21st. I really think my RV would be great for you. If you have any questions, please let me know." Right, and you can kind of take a gauge if they're looking for like a five day. Um, if they're looking for, you know, travel trailer, fifth wheel, like you can, you can send them profile links. You can send them say, Hey, I got multiple units. If you've got multiple units, you can let them know, Hey, I got, you know, a 10% promotion for first time renters. Like this is all things that you guys can do to be creative in getting your business off the ground. Right? So those are some of the things that we did is we utilize them again. Um, outdoorsy has the Insta match that you can take advantage of. Um, Let's see here. What well, some of the most common things that we hear from renters is like you guys were the only ones that would get back to us or you were the ones that would were willing to answer all my questions or whatever. And so that comes back again to the people skills and just customer service. <laughs> be a person that you would want to interact with when you're making a deal. Would you want someone to be welcoming and um, accommodating to you? Or would you want somebody to kind of ignore you and and not pay attention to you? Yeah. It's pretty simple. And so um, we get a lot of rentals, even if our unit isn't the best price, um, because people enjoy dealing with us versus dealing with someone else who's maybe just not as interested in dealing with people. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah. She said a lot. And, and I mean, a lot, a lot of people said nobody's responded and it's really weird. Cause I guess we're all on here trying to make some money, right? Rent out our RVs, <laughs> but you know, I've, I've been able to take some business, you know, from folks that just never responded to them. So it's definitely helpful and you can build your book of business that way. Um, and I would also encourage you if you get a message, you know, um, if you need to set up uh, an alert, you know, or a notification on your phone, I would do it, you know, and get back to them sooner than later. Um, it really helps you guys in just, just getting the booking, retaining the booking, and then kind of building your book of business. So, so one of the other uh, the things I wanted to go back on with, um, with Facebook is uh, a Facebook ad. Like, so, so you can actually go to Marketplace and you can set up... Um, like a rental, you know, I did this once and I was able to get a 30 day rental from it. And then another referral from it from somebody who reached out and said, Hey, you know, we, my, my mother-in-law is looking for a rental and it literally cost me five bucks to our, our marketplace. It was free. So your marketplace, you can set up any of those and, and set them up as, as rentals. Um, of course I got a lot of flack because, you know, when you're looking at, um, you know, your nightly rate, right? People are thinking, God, that's 3,500 bucks a month. You know, why would anybody want to do that? And it, it was really kind of funny. Somebody blew that up and it, it just kind of helped my ad get out there. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it's a, it's an RV rental for, you know, more, more or less a weekend, right? For recreation, yeah, not recreation. for living. Yep. Okay. So again, platforms are great. Smart match, Insta match are great. Um, and the other thing too is post your website. You know, get your get your website all over the place. You know, it might be spamming and you might be a little hesitant, but, you know, as a business owner, you know, the people that are going to support you are going to support you. And one of the things that we found out is as we started kind of posting um, our website with just kind of a brief overview of why we're doing what we're doing, uh, people were sharing it. And then before you know it, I had a lot of people reaching out on Messenger saying, hey, I'm looking for this weekend or, hey, I'm glad you uh, came out. My last renter canceled on me. You know, do you have one available for this weekend? Mm -hmm. And we got bookings that way. So just it's going to take a little bit of hustle in the beginning, but this will help you get your business off the ground. Anything on that? Yeah, well, I think sometimes talking about getting a website set up, it can feel a little bit intimidating. But when you're looking through this, this website is beautiful. Um, it's laid out. It's easy to look at. And it was minimal work for us. There is so 
excuse me, that was not going to be proper English. There are so <laughs> many resources out there to help you be able to do this in a simple way that isn't going to take up a bunch of your time. It's not going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, consultant fees and, you know, finding someone to do it all. There is easy stuff out there to help you do this kind of stuff. So don't be intimidated by the idea of putting together a website or um, or doing any of that kind of stuff. It's just, it's not as challenging as it appears. Absolutely. So the, the, the last thing I want to say about getting your business off the ground um, the right way is obviously with more units, right? Um, the more rentals that you're going to get, right? I know some people are kind of hesitant um, when they first get started, but for us, we saw this, um, we saw the track record of RV Share, we saw the track record of Outdoorsy, we looked at some of the stats and some of the numbers, and then we just started getting bookings ourselves. So we, we proved to ourselves that this thing was going to work and is going to be successful. So the next thing I want to talk about with getting your business started off right is don't be, you know, don't hesitate to talk to family and friends about, hey, do you guys need anything as far as the rental goes? The other thing that you can talk to them about is co-assignments. Um, you know, we didn't think about this in the beginning. It wasn't even a, a, a thing where we were like, God, you know, can we bring any else on and stuff like even, that? Yeah, yeah we no. thought we had to buy a bunch of units and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build our fleet. But we had somebody, luckily for us, that reached out to us and said, hey, I'm going to give you my unit. Can you rent it for me and make some money? And we're like, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I think that'll work. And we set it up just like it was our own. And we started getting that booked out. So that'll help you too. So so initially, out of the gates, get some co-assignments. Get in some conversations. Again, talk to people about your business and let them know that you exist. You know, um, we got a lot of those comments in the beginning, you know, you know, um, your, your small little RV rental businesses. How's your little RV rental business doing? And I didn't think of it that way. I thought of, I, I, I saw the numbers and I said, man, this thing could be, you know, a hundred thousand, a quarter million. I saw a guy in Seattle who started an RV rental business. He makes $3 million a year, has a hundred plus units and a bunch of camper vans and all sorts of stuff. This business can be built big if you want to do it that way. Right? So co-assignments. So you got anything on that before I move on to the next? Okay. If your wife thinks you're crazy, that's also normal. And... <laughs> yeah, that's that's totally normal. <laughs> All right, so I created a video on this. I want to talk about not to leave money on the table, right? What does that mean, right? So when we first got started in our business, there was a lot of things that we did to try to just get that rental. And we were only making like 200 bucks on one rental and maybe 300 bucks on another while we were also delivering it 50 plus miles and doing certain things. And we didn't charge for delivery and, you know, a lot of things like that. And I think a lot of people make those mistakes. And we hope that you guys avoid that by telling you this. Don't leave money on the table. Charge for linens. Charge for the things that you're going to provide. Charge for prep fees, you know, charge for pet fees. We didn't charge a pet fee in the beginning. And then we had our, it was like our, what, six rental the guy had a dog in there and just literally, it just got hair Did you groom everywhere. this dog in yeah. here? What is going on? Yeah, it totally felt that way. So what we ended up doing is my wife just put her foot down and she said, we're going to charge a fee. This is ridiculous. So we charged the fee. And ever since then, you know, we don't we don't charge whether they have a short hair dog or long hair dog. Doesn't matter. There should be a pet fee imposed. If you look at boarding that pet over a weekend, it's going to cost them about one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty dollars. If you guys look into that, people will watch your dog for you, but it's way more expensive, more, way more expensive than like 50 or 60 bucks. Right. So um, dump fees. A lot of people don't want to dump. Right. So we started adding that. That's money that you're leaving on the table. If that's a part of your service, I think you're selling yourself a little bit short. You guys should. You know, these are things that for us, you know, we're fortunate to be able to dump here on property, but we don't like doing it. But we're probably, I don't know, 10 miles away from the nearest dump here. And we have to drive literally a whole loop on the freeway <laughs> to go dump it and then come back home. And diesel is expensive right? Your time's worth it. All these different types of things, right? So remember, you want to make sure that you're not leaving money on the table. If you're dry camping, right? Um, if you're hesitant about investing the money to buy a generator, go buy one. Yeah, it's going to cost you probably three to 600 to 700 bucks in the beginning, but you'll get that money back. If you're charging a good rate, like 35, 30 bucks, 35, 45, 40 bucks a night, you're going to get that money back and then some. Sure, it's going to put some wear and tear in a unit, but it's an expense. It's a business expense. So that's my encouragement for you guys is not to um, leave money on the table. You got anything you want to talk about? 
Yeah, I think, you know, we've gone back and forth about lots of these different fees and between as a consumer feeling like I'm getting nickel and dimed for every little thing and as a business owner going, well, all these nickels and dimes add up for me too. And where we had to land was what makes the most sense for us and for our family. Um, And it's a lot of work to keep the laundry going. And it's a lot of work to, you know, to keep them clean. It's a lot of work to do all these different things without going in and then hiring a service. And then at that point, now we're spending extra money anyway. And so um, it, it make sure that you're paying yourself for your time. It it can be fun, (laughs) but also when you've got 10, 11, 12, 13 units that are going out and you're constantly cleaning and you're constantly doing these things, all that time adds up and it begins to wear on you. So you need to pay yourself for that time. It's not fun anymore at that point. It's it's hard work. And so, yeah, Yeah. make sure that you're compensating yourself appropriately. Absolutely. Good point. And then, uh, so a couple other other small add-ons that I have here is extra chairs, you know, it wasn't a ton of, of people, but I maybe three or four, you know, I add, you know, an extra handful of chairs for 25 bucks, right? That's extra money that we can make. Um, tables, another thing where we had just a couple of renters where they had a lot of people and they needed an extra table. So for we, outside, yeah, for outside, we threw in a, a table for them. That was an extra 25 bucks. Um, solar generators, you know, some people have CPAP machines or certain things like that. That was, I think, I think it charged 15 bucks. All it does, I mean, you don't have to put any gas in it. You just got to make sure it's got power, but that thing lasts. So that was a couple of times last year that we rented out. That was, you know, an extra, I think it was like 35, 40 bucks I made. You know, it's not a lot, but you're leaving money on the table if you don't think about some of these things. Um, anything on that? Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so when you're, when you're looking at your overall business, you want to make sure that you maximize any and all areas of profitability that you can. Um so I think that was it. That's all we really wanted to cover. <laughs> I had all my notes here. I definitely wanted to leave some time for some questions. So if you guys have any questions, uh, anything that you guys want to add to this, feel free to leave them in the comments. Anything else? Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe <laughs> and ring the bell and yes. do all the YouTube things. And we're going we're gonna to figure out this live thing. I promise you guys. <laughs> Someday. We're going to get this live thing figured out and we will go live a whole lot more because I like interacting with people. I like when people ask questions. I I do TikTok lives and, you know, believe it or not, people jump on there and start asking questions. It's actually pretty fun. So anyways, um, I guess we'll just leave it at that. And as always, happy camping. Bye.